12 Mindset is to today's Life Sciences show. Here with me, Megan, and my favorite companion, Aslan. Can you believe it's been a whole week since we've been here? So how have you been? Megan, <laughs> Megan, Megan, I'm great, I'm great. Why are you so great? I'm great, I'm back with the great 12s for the start. Finally, and it's uh, been a long three weeks. For the last three weeks, I've been presenting without eating, so now I've got a little bit more energy tonight. I'm so happy. What are we doing today? We are looking at population ecology. We are busy with environment, mm -hmm. and the first segment is population ecology. So we've moved away from humans and reproduction and menstrual cycles in grade 12, and now we're doing ecology. Yeah. So I'm so excited to get started with the lessons grade 12, but right before we do that, let me tell you where to get me, where to find me, where to get all the information that you need in order to enjoy a fantastic show that we have lined up for today. So first of all, facebook.com forward slash learn extra x is with a x i mean extra is with a x don't forget macmillan i want to say thank you so much our sponsors for sponsoring our show as well if you want to sit and look at the notes that is www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn extra also we will be on twitter and that is at learn extra Whew, that was a mouthful so i think i'm just going to take a break and give it away to aslan thanks megan thank you very much mindset is welcome again back uh, to the great 12s i must say a good welcome to you and i'm hoping you're welcoming me back home we're starting with pl uh, population ecology let's see what's in store for you today what are we looking at today mainly in this lesson first of all we look at the definition and the relationship amongst the following these words in other words species community ecological niche habitat ecosystem and this whole section on population ecology we then move on to consider the various population parameters Ooh, population parameters what am i talking Population parameters are those factors that cause a change in the population. So we're going to look at what are they, these factors that we're talking about, and how do they affect the population. And a whole lot of discussion follows. Follow, uh, we're talking about how the population fluctuates, how does it change, and how is it regulated. We're also going to look at what we mean by the word carrying capacity. What do we mean by environmental resistance? or limiting factors and how these things impact on growth. We also want to look at the effect of annual and seasonal fluctuation in the population. How do these things affect the population size? Lastly, we want to look at the characteristics of two growth forms. The first being the geometric growth form or J-shaped curve. Now, we must understand that the form of growth is not J-shaped. The why we put the word J-shaped here is because when we look at the graph that depicts geometric growth, it takes a J-shape. So you cannot, when they ask you, what type of growth is this, and you write J-shape, that's not uh, the type of growth. That is the characteristic shape of a graph, of a line graph, when it shows geometric growth remember that so the name is geometric growth and the same goes to the second one it's logistic growth form it's not s-shaped growth s-shaped is uh, the shape of the graph so this is why we put it there so that you can uh, remember that so when they're asking you the type of growth you use these names here geometric and logistic so that's what we have in store for you so let's get straight into it because you know uh, from what i've told you there Normally, what we have to do, take just a small portion of the board. Here, we went right to the bottom, so obviously, it's a hell of a lot of work. What are we talking about? We start off with the definitions. The first definition is something familiar. We like to start with something familiar to you. You've done this already in evolution. Species, a group of organisms which share, first mark, same characteristic, and are capable of interbreeding to give rise to fertile de 
Well done, wow. Aslan. It's because you have so much food in you, I'm That's telling it, you. I think so, eh? New beginnings. Wow, I can <laughs> read it. I'm sure you can read it as well. And you, <laughs> and you, and yes, you as well. Good. <laughs> Population, again, another definition from the past. It's a group of organisms of the same species in the same habitat at the same time that have the ability to interbreed. But remember, uh, you must say this, this last part as well, but remember already, to go back to this one, a species must, if they're the same species, they must, if, how do we define them as a species? If they can interbreed with each other and produce fertile offspring. So you must keep that in mind. So remember, in terms of a population, and we've done this under uh, evolution as well, you can have a mealy plantation in your house, and I can have a mealy plantation in my house. Although they're the same species, and although they can interbreed to produce fertile offspring, but they're not in the same area. So they're not the same population. It's your mealy population, Megan's mealy population, mm -hmm. Aslan's mealy population. Or even in my own yard, I can have a mealy population in 2013, <laughs> and another one in 2014. They're not the same population even though they're the same species in the same area, but not the same time. So they must meet all three criteria. Same species, same time, same habitat. And the fourth one, obviously, if they're the same species, they must be able to interbreed. Good. The next definition is the one of community. A community, I mean, you take your homes, your, your, your town. You got your family, you got the individual, that's you, or your brother, or your father, your mother. Then you have a family there inside. That's your family. And then you have neighbors and so on. You form the community of whichever town that you come from. From example, I come from the town Azadbul, so I am part of the Azadbul community. So the same way. Now here, all the plants and animals living in a different, defined area, in a specific area, Azadbul, Lanasia, Johannesburg, uh, Highlands North, Boxburg, whichever area. So that is the population, the community in that area there. So a community then, obviously, by the fact that we're talking about plants and we're talking about animals, and we're not talking about specific species. We're talking about a lot of plants, a lot of animals. So obviously this means is many populations. Many populations will make up a community. And many communities put together, interacting with the non-living or ab abiotic factors will make up the ecosystem. Ecosystem, the living things and their relationship, the, 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 the definition here, sorry, should be, this is for ecology. Ecosystem is the plants and animals in the natural I'm going to continue here, non-living environment. This will make up the ecosystem. And ecology, the word OG, I told you last time, logi, not OG, but logi, <laughs> will mean the study of something. The study of living things and their relationship with each other and the environment. This is the study of the ecology. An ecological niche, if we talk of your niche, means your space. What, what is your niche in the market? I am a photographer, so my niche is in photography. I am an uh, interior designer, so my niche is in interior designing. This is where my market is, my marketplace, or my space in this big global uh, uh, world that we are talking about. So the ecological niche means the same, but we're talking about the environment. The functional position of a particular organism in its environment. In a particular environment, a particular animal or plant has a particular niche, its spot, its functional area where it can. Like the giraffe, they're eating further up, their niche is higher up, whereas the rabbits, their niche is further down, etc., etc. Environmental resistance, environmental, obviously, from the environment, resistance, if somebody is resisting, that means they they do not want to accept what you want to do. They're resisting, resisting arrest. When the cop wants to arrest you, and they say you're resisting arrest, it means you are not conforming, you don't want to be arrested. 
So environmental resistance, when the environment resists, what does it resist? It resists the population growth. So it stops population growth somehow. The combined effect of all the limiting factors that limit the growth of a population. Limiting factors, those factors uh, that will bring about a stunt in the growth. Why? For example, space. There's only so much space a particular environment has. So once the animals reach that particular space, the environment starts resisting and keeps them down because if they're too much, there'll be competition, some will die, and some will move away, and so on. And if they stay there, they're going to degrade the environment, and they'll bring down the carrying capacity, which we'll talk about just now. Limiting factor, factors, which can be density dependent or density independent, that limit the rate of population growth. There's a lot of... What happened there? Something funny. Okay, we had a blank there. We still with the definitions, and now we spoke about the words. Let's look at some pictures. Here is an organism. When many of the same organism of the same species get together, they form a population. Because they are of the same species and they can interbreed to produce fertile offspring, so they become a population. Once these animals eh, interact with other animals and plants in that area, there's different plants growing there, there's other animals there, they form a community. So there's different populations making up the community. And when these communities interact with the non-living environment, they form an ecosystem. To take it one step further, I've given some nice diagrams just to give you an idea. Individual, there's the population from there, going to the population, now you're getting a whole lot of other animals as well. So we're moving from a po individual population, there's many populations making up a community. And now when these communities are interacting with the environment, we're having a whole ecosystem there. Now, in where does all this fit? This all fits in the biosphere. The biosphere is that part of Earth where living things can exist. And within this space where living things can exist, there are different types of areas. In grade 10, you learned, we call these different biomes. So you've got a biosphere, the big area, and within that, there's certain biomes, and in that biome, there are certain ecosystems, and in these ecosystems, there are communities, and in these communities, there are different populations, and each population is made up of individual organisms. And there we have the story again. Same story, organism, individual, organism, population, community, a community together with the non-living environment is an ecosystem. All the ecosystems of Earth make up the biosphere. So different ecosystems make up different biomes, and then the biomes make up the biosphere. Good. Now we get to the nitty-gritty of the concepts. Right now, all we have done till now, guys, is terminology, terminology, terminology. It's important that you understand the terms because these terms are going to be used to explain the concepts that follow. So you need to know the terminology. So the first thing we're talking about is population parameters. The population parameters speaks to those things that bring about a change in the size of the population. The first one is natality or the birth rate. But now, remember that natality does not mean, uh, natality means actually increase in the population. Now, natality increase cannot always only be birth, because not all organisms are born. You and I were born, most mammals are born, but other organisms hatch, others germinate, others form by cell division, etc., etc., etc. So there we have your, your birth story there, some more of the birth story there. Yeah, you're talking about an insect that hatched and goes through metamorphosis. You're talking about cell that just divides by binary fission, and you're having 
these things happening there, or you have the hydra where budding takes place, and from the bud, a new individual is formed, and in this way, the population increase. So, natality then is the ability of a population to increase, to grow. And this can be by birth, hatching, germination, uh, cell division, and or budding, or any other thing that gives rise to an increase in the population. So guys, we've done, covered a whole lot of terminology. We are now looking at the population parameters. When we come back, we go further into the population parameters. And with that, Megan, it's all yours. You ready for a break? I think so. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit sick. But anyway, I'd like to tell you mindsetters, go have a stretch, go have a break, and we'll see you right afterwards. Welcome back, Great Talves. Have you had a great ad break? I just had a sip of water, and Aslan just told me he became a grandfather last night. So I'm so happy, and I'll say congratulations. Give him a shout out on the page because it's a really, really good milestone in someone's life or landmark to have a grandchild, even though I've never experienced that. But nevertheless, I want to tell you that mindset needs you. Yes, mindset needs you to collect a teacher, and if you're interested if, or if they are interested in doing a great 10 to 12 caps which is content development review and video presentation you must register on this page called mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash jobs and then you register them and you excuse me let me just swallow you register them and then if there's any opportunities available for those teachers then they could become part of team mindset here at the mindset studios and i think that's really really groovy so i just want to tell you where to find me again which is facebook.com forward slash learn extra and that was again a mouthful to say so aslan please take it away from me thanks megan and hey you yes i can see what you're <coughs> saying you're saying he looked like a grandfather a long time ago that's your beard it. that um, gave you away i i i i worked very hard and long <laughs> to look like a grandfather <laughs> now i am a grandfather let's talk about that later Good. So we have, uh, well, my family then has uh, done some natality exactly. by the birth rate increase. And so one more has in, in been included in the human population. So there's one more in the human population. Good. So we said that natality, production of new individuals by birth, hatching, germination, or cell division, or even budding, etc. as I told you earlier. But that's also cell division. Good. We went right through all of that. The next parameter is mortality. Mortality, death rate. Now, Megan, we can't talk about death by hatching, no. or degerminating, mm -mm. or de-cell division. Death is death. death. Whether you're a plant, whether <laughs> you're an hydra, whether you're a planaria, or a tiny amoeba, whether you're a human being, when you die, you die. <laughs> Simple <laughs> as that. There's no dead, ways dead, dead. in talking about hatching and de-hatching and so on. So, Mortality, simply put, is the death rate. And I had to put some gruesome pictures there just to show you what we mean by the death just rate. Just when was that taken in, like, the medieval period? That's right, many, many moons ago. <laughs> right. Okay, so the death rate, that's easy. The next population parameter, and this is broken up into three others in it. So the word is dispersal. Dispersal means to spread somehow. But we're not just talking about dispersal just to spread. We talk about movement of individuals or parts of individuals from one habitat to another. So in some cases it will be immigration, in some cases it will be emigration, and in some cases it could be migration. These three terms together is known as dispersal or dispersion. Now obviously we have to look at the different types. And uh, interestingly enough, today I was listening to the radio and everybody is worried about the, 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 the story, the Kenyan uh, airport that uh, was up in flames, so planes can't go there. Lots of people were going there to the Serengeti to see the migration that's going to be happening anytime now of the animals. And here we have a nice little slide 
to show you exactly the migration of the bulbiers in the same area. They move away when the grass gets dry, etc., and they move to greener pastures, and they move in huge herds. And in this time, obviously, it's a whole series of events that take place. Imagine if you're a lion. When you look at this herd, you and I, we look at it and say, wow, look at these animals going. But if a lion is having the same view of these animals, he's saying, wow, there's food. Yeah, look Plenty at that food it. moving. It's like fries right? walking. And look where they're going to. They're going to the river. And there in the river <coughs> are lurking many crocodiles. And they're also Googling their eyes and saying, wow, here's food. some food coming for us. And so there's a whole ecosystem that in that whole time that takes place as well. But we're just using that as an example of migration. Let's start with immigration. Notice immigration starts with the letter I. So let's put an N next to it. Immigration means to come into a population. Immigration I, in. The process that occurs when an organ enters a new place to settle. So in other words, if somebody comes into South Africa, he's an immigrant here. The area where he left from, in that country, he's considered to be an emigrant. So the country where you're leaving, you're emigrating from, and the country where you're going to, you're an immigrant there. So in the same way, the population that the animal leaves, there they're emigrating from, and the population in which they come into, they will be immigrants there. So E for emigrate, emigration, emigration, E for exit, to go out. That's how you're going to remember it. The process occurs when organ leaves one place to go to another. And the last one is migration. This is the in-between thing. And this is what the volubius are doing. They're not leaving permanently. They're going away for a temporary time. And this is determined by the seasons, the rainfall, the amount of food, etc. So migration takes place. Animal move from one area to another because of lack of water, food, or to avoid the winter. And they generally return to that area. So it's a, this is a periodic thing. The others are, you know, permanently, I'm deciding I'm going from here, I'm going to stay somewhere else. This animal decides to do that. Or I'm coming into this population. Where migration is periodic, depending on the season, depending on the rainfall, etc. the organism will leave and or come back. Now we need to look at those factors a little bit more in detail as we go along. So first is a definition. Now, how do these parameters, we've na named them. What do we name? We've named natality, mortality, immigration, migration, emigration. We've named them. Now we want to know how do these parameters affect the population size. What do they do to a population size? Let's look at it. Births and immigration obviously add to the population. It's coming in, so it becomes bigger. And... Emigration and death decreases the population. Now, a population will have zero growth. That means it will not be growing if only the number of births and immigration is equal to the number of deaths and emig emigration. Because that means there's a net of nothing happening there. If 10 were coming in and 10 were going out, that means nothing happened to this population. It remains the same. But this doesn't happen in nature. Either the mortality and the emigration is higher, or the immigration and the birth is higher. One of those two. So if, if the birth and immigration is higher, the population size increases. Or if death and emigration is higher, the population size decreases. But we need to pause at that stage as well. When does this really affect a population? This immigration and emigration especially. If a population is full, and I'm using the word full deliberately now because we're going to use another term just now. If a population is full and more animals come in, obviously this is not a good thing because the population is already full. There's no more space. It's going to cause problems here. Now people are going to start, or organisms are going to compete for space and they need, some have to go away or die in the process. So it's not a good thing when a population is full for more immigration to take place. But when it's full, if emigration takes place, no big deal, because the population is high. So it's not going to be threatened in any way. They've got enough animals to, to do their thing, to say. 
On the other hand, if a population is low, it's very low, then immigration won't affect it because it's low anyway. So even if hordes of animals come there, it will take the population up. But in this case, emigration affects it tremendously because even if two organisms go out of there, if there were two females that were childbearing or offspring bearing, I should use a general term, offspring bearing, that left that population, now you have two less females that can have offspring in that population. So this has a drastic effect on the population. So let's look at it again. When the population is full, immigration to that population can have ill effects. Emigration not going to affect that population much. If the population is low, immigration won't have a big effect, but emigration will. And Guys, you cannot learn this from a textbook. Look at the textbook and learn it. This is common sense. I know common sense is not so common anymore, but let's try. Let's try. Think about it. Think about it. It makes sense. This must make sense to you like it's making sense to me. It must make sense to you. First understand, first understand, and then apply. Good? Let's move. And this diagram simply says that without pictures. Mortality and immigration causing the population size to go down, and natality and immigration will cause the population size to increase. How do the parameters affect population size? We're moving on still. Now we're talking about another type of a graph called survivorship curve. And we get three types there. In this particular graph, we have three types, one, two, and three. They're not called one, two, and three. We're just giving them names, one, two, and three. So here's a graph here. On the x-axis, the independent variable is the percentage of maximum life. And on the y-axis, the, the dependent variable, the number of survivors. We're starting here with one and moving up that way here from 0 to 10, this should be 10, that should be 100, that should be 1,000, okay? So we're moving in that direction. Now, let's look at type 1. Look at type 1 and look at the percentage of the lifespan. Where is this in the lifespan? This is obviously young and this is old. This is few. And this is many. Let's understand it. Let's get into the habit of trying to read the graph properly. Let's read what the graph is telling us. It's talking to us. Let's see what it's telling us. So this is now we just put a couple of things there. Let's look at graph one first. We see that there's, there are here, there's X amount here, and they generally keep going that way till getting towards the old age, and then there's a dip there. Then you got graph two here. This should be one, two, and three. Somewhere we got the numbers wrong. Let's call this three. Three, three. This will be two. Doesn't matter which one you call one, two, and three, but as long as you know which one you're calling one, two, and three, right? Look at this one. There's many offspring, but not many of them survive. There's a big dip here in the beginning. There. And then those that survive, they continue till old age there. And then we look at two, it's straight line. So it means whether young or old, the chances are equal to die. Okay, just to understand the graph. And to move on with that, uh, they say explain the graphs in terms of one. Now, I've given you what happened just physically there. Now, you need to explain. Explain means you need to give details why that is so. So let's look at graph type 1. Uh, I hope I know what I'm doing. OK, there we go. Good. Are you getting the hang of this? You sure? Right. The first one, there's a low infant mortality. Not many of the young are dying because the graph was going straight across. Go back. Why must I make you imagine when it's here? There you go. They're not dying there. 
is surviving. Most of the offspring reach adulthood. Why? Because these are key strategy species. They have a high degree of parental care. High degree of parental care means the, they have few offspring, but the offspring that they have will survive to adulthood. Type two, on the other hand, high infant mortality, high infant, now remember we numbered it three, but it's number two now according to our question, right? So this one will be three. This one has a high infant mortality. Many of the young are dying. And many, all right, we said that already, they are R strategy species. R strategy species are those that have low degree of parental care. So therefore, they're not taking care of the offspring. They make many offspring, and many of those will die. But the, the fact that they make many is a survival strategy. So at least some will reach adulthood. And the last one, there's an equal chance of mortality survival throughout the lifespan. How do the, are uh, we still busy with that? Population size is limited by, we said limiting factors are either density dependent or density independent. Density dependent, meaning it's dependent on density. It's a nice way to explain it. No, you're using the same words. It's dependent on the size of the population. If a factor is dependent on the size of the population, we say it's density dependent. If a factor is not dependent on the size of the population, and then we say it's density independent. Let's look at some of them. Disease, competition, predators, parasites, food, crowding. In these cases, the greater the population, the greater the effect these factors have. It's obvious. Disease. If there's lots of organisms and they're living closer, the dense, the disease will spread fast. Competition, the more they are, the more competition. Predators, the more they are, the more they're going to be fed on. Uh, parasites, same story. Food, the more they are, the less the food, and they're going to have competition because of that and crowding. Density independent factors, on the other hand, they're not dependent on the size. These factors, and you can see they all, we can call them natural disasters, volcanoes, temperature problems, storms, floods, chemical pesticides. What do they do? They're going to just disrupt the habitat one time. It doesn't matter whether there's one or one million. The effect will still be the same in a density independent factor. And I think with that, maybe it's your turn. You ready? Yeah. I think I just posted, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is terrible. I just posted on the page. I said, can you guys guess what the population of the actual world is? I'd love to see your answers. Keep posting my tricks for Aslam and I, and we'll be back right after the break. Welcome back, Great Twelves. Hope you had a great ad, well, ad break, break. <laughs> and you're ready to start this fantastic lesson. I see that we have a question, and now my page is just refreshed, so this is a little bit of a problem. Azan, just carry on speaking while I find your questions. Good, 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 Megan. Let's carry on then. We were talking about the density dependent factors and density independent factors. Like I said, in the terms of density dependent factors, the greater the population, the greater the effect. Because disease, for example, can spread, and the greater the population spreads faster and causes problems. Whereas if the population was low, the organisms would have been spread out far apart, the disease won't affect all of them all the time. Whereas independent factors are generally abiotic factors, are generally natural disasters, like fires, like volcanoes, like storms, floods, pesticides, whatever else, which will cause habitat destruction. It's going to damage the habitat, and with the habitat, it may damage animals. It doesn't matter whether they're many or they're few. When an earthquake hits, it doesn't matter whether it's many or there's few. It will have the same effect. Okay, I Maybe. found it. Precious Mdimlazi. What kinds of essays will they ask about population and communication ecology? Precious, uh, the types of essays they can ask you are plenty. They can ask you to explain all these terminologies. For example, they can tell you to explain the population parameters and the effects that these po population parameters have on the population growth. With that, they can then go further to say and also talk about the different growth forms that exist. So those are some of the types of questions that can come there. And 
the, the, so far they've asked more on the second half of this, and that's in the community and the social part of it. In community uh, ecology, they can ask you for the different types of relationship, like predator, prey, like commensalism, mutualism, and uh, parasitism, and you need to explain them with examples. So there's plenty of marks there. Each one there is about three to four marks. So that already gives you four concepts, gives you 16 marks. You need 17 for an essay plus three for a synthesis, gives you 20. So those are some of the questions that can come there. Any more, Megan? No. Nope, not yet. Good. Mm -mm. All right, guys. So I'm hoping by I'm hoping that by your not posting the questions, it's not that you don't want to ask questions. It's that you're understanding what we're saying. Yes, okay? please. And I'm if you do have questions, post on the page. I am here for all of you. I Remember, promise. I said earlier that we're going to come across another term, and I said earlier that we talked about whether population is full or not. This term that we are talking about is known as carrying capacity. The carrying capacity of a of an environment is the maximum population size that a certain environment can support for an extended period of time for a population of a particular species. So the maximum number of individuals of a species that a particular habitat can support is known as its carrying capacity. Okay? So if you take a liter of coke, a liter, all right, let's not talk of Coke, talk of a bottle, a liter bottle. Its carrying capacity is one liter. You can't put 1.5 liter in a one liter bottle. It can only take one liter. So the carrying capacity of that bottle is one liter. So the environment, too, can only support a particular number of a particular type of organism because of the space, because of the amount of food, gases, etc. in that environment and other resources. So we call that its carrying capacity. And to give you an analogy of a bucket filling up here, the carrying capacity is at this level here. That's the maximum this, butter, this, bucket, butter, this bucket can carry. Anything more than that has to spill over. And if it's spilling over, it means the animals are competing and going to die. Or they have to move away from that area. This is what we are saying here. So when these things happen, then you're going to have population losses, some of the population will be lost and they have to go, because you can't go more than that. It has to go in there. Then some of the things that causes population losses, starvation because competition is taking place, uh, accidents, pollution, old age, the animals just reach old age and die, disease, predation, other animals eat them or whatever else that happens there. So that's what we're talking about in terms of carrying capacity. This then takes us to the next stage and that is the population growth curves. The first type of growth, as we mentioned in our introduction, is exponential growth. Exponential means to double on double all the time, like compound interest. Right? And here's a graph that shows it. And now you'll see the J, the J curve that we are talking about. So what happens here is a period of very slow growth after which the population just rockets. So we have this period here which we call the lag phase. In this phase, population growth is slow because of one of, of two reasons. One is the organisms are still getting used to the environment. The big word that the textbook will use, they are getting acclimatized to the environment. So we're saying they're getting used to the environment. As soon as they get used to the environment, then the population starts shooting up. Or alternatively, the other reason for the slow growth could be that these individuals were sexually immature, so they could not reproduce. So those are the two reasons. The more plausible one is the fact that they're getting used to the environment. And that will fit into our evolution and the rest of it as well. So that's what's happening there. Very simple, there's two phases here, the lag phase and the exponential growth phase. You have to understand that in nature, this rarely occurs. Because we said something earlier, that carrying capacity will be reached. And then environmental resistance will come in. And when that environmental resistance comes in, this population will either go down or stabilize. And that will bring us to our next graph. The logistic growth form. Uh, yeah, I put this in the form of a question because it's common sense. But we need to also listen to what the graph is telling us. So study the graph below and answer the questions that follow. 
There is the graph time in hours. Look at the units next to the heading of the x-axis. And here it's number of yeast cells. So number is already a unit. You can't put units next to it. It's on a y. So the number is dependent on time. Over time, the number changed. The number did not change the time. The time changed the number. So the number is dependent on the time. Dependent, independent. The independent factor comes on the x-axis in the graph. Look at the intervals. They are equidistant apart. And the same this way here, equidistant apart. And between 100 and 200, there's 100. Between 400 and 500, is still 100. And so on and so on and so on. All right, let's look at this graph now. Oops. The answers have been exposed. Oof. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. It must have moved in the, 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 the pasting here. All right, anyway. <laughs> All right. We can fix that, Megan. We'll just pretend to erase it. There we go. They weren't so sharp to see it so quickly, right? <laughs> okay. So now they're not there anymore. Good. <coughs> All right. Identify each of the phases labeled A to D in this graph. A, B, C, and this would be D here on top. This one here, D. Good, let's see. A, and we can label it on here. A is the lag phase. Here. There. A is the lag phase. B, look at the growth. Exponential growth phase. C is this area here, not that. This is C. What's happening? The population is still growing, but it's not as steep as it was. So we say that this is the decelerating. This exponential can also be called the accelerating. Notice you can't say declining here. Because the population is not declining. How can it be declined? Because it's still climbing up. But it's not climbing as steep as it was before. So it's decelerating. The foot is still on a pedal, but you're taking your foot slowly off, so it's not traveling so fast anymore. And last year, this one here, this area here, this is known as the stationary. What's the spelling? Oops. So what's the spelling, eh? <laughs> what's the spelling? Stationary with an A. Not with an E. Stationary with an E is the pens and pencils that you use. Stationary, or we can call it the equilibrium phase. Notice in nature, you're not going to get such a nice S. Your population cannot stay the way that it's showing here. So in this area here of uh, stability or stationary or equilibrium, you may even have something that goes like that, goes up, like that, goes up, like that, goes there, and then goes that way as well. Same thing. The point is it's staying in more or less the same area. It's fluctuating around a small area and it's going through there. It's still the stationary phase. Okay, so there we have named them lag, log. Another name also for the exponential is log, coming from logarithm. Okay, decelerating and stationary. Next question. Des describe each of the named phases. You've named them. Now we need to describe them. Describe means you must tell us what's happening there and why. So the first one is the lag phase. The population is initially slow. The population growth, sorry, is slow because same reason we gave earlier. It's still, and I've used the big word here, it's still acclimatizing or adapting to the new habit. I would rather use the word getting used to. Okay, then we have the next phase, the log accelerating exponential phase. When conditions become suitable and the population is now used to the environment, it starts growing rapidly. You must say slowly first, rapidly here. You can't say growing. It was growing, even there it was growing, but it was growing slowly. There, look there, there's growth there, but it's slow. But here it's rapid. You see how specific you have to be in your answer. So the growth is rapid there. This is also due to limited environmental resistance. Because they're well below the carrying capacity, there's no resistance on the environment. So they're allowed to increase tremendously. And the natality rate is way greater than the mortality rate. 
then we go to see the decelerating growth rate as now environmental resistance environmental resistance starts increasing slows the growth rate so it's still increasing but at a slower pace so there's a slower increase you must mention slower increase you cannot say decrease it's wrong the last one there equilibrium or stationary phase now there's more even environmental resistance why because the population is close to carrying capacity they're reaching carrying capacity the population has reached its carrying capacity so the population stays more or less the same and what is carrying capacity is the number of individuals that the area can sustain or keep alive c name a phase that may be present after the equilibrium phase that means after this phase here we can get another phase you must name that and the answer is the death phase some textbooks use the word extinction phase. I do not like that. Extinction means that all those animals become extinct completely. That's not the case. They die. They may move away to other areas as well. It doesn't mean that they're extinct. Okay? Extinction, by definition, means there must be not one more of that left on Earth. Okay? Describe this phase. What happens here? Many individuals may die or leave this environment due to dramatic change in or degradation of the environment. Something has happened to this environment, a fire, or there were too many, they were overpopulated and they, they brought, they ate all the food that was available. Now, if there was so much food available, now there's so little food available, so the carrying capacity has decreased. Okay? And other factors like food, shelter, etc., has brought this down, and that is what we have there. We then move on. Let's just go one step back to the graph again. I just want to use the graph itself to be explained. So, how does this, how is this asked? You can ask. How is this asked? You can ask. Either they give you a graph like this, and they ask you what I've just asked you here, or they give you a table and they ask you to draw the graph. And when you draw that graph, then you will get the shape and they can ask you questions based on that. So you need to know how to explain this. Also, you must be able to compare the two graphs, the logistic and the uh, exponential growth form, uh, forms. You see they both have a lag phase, they both have a log phase, but the logistic has stationary and of the death phase. And Sometimes they put in a line here, dotted line here, where the stationary is happening, and sometimes they show you arrows here. They ask you what's the dotted line, that's carrying capacity. And they can ask you in figures, just without even having that line there. They ask you what's the carrying capacity of this. You look for where it's stationary, go across, eh, close to 700. Good? Megan, any questions? Yeah, Tondani asks you, does the lag phase also mean the period of adaption? Adaptation. With that. Yeah, a period of adaptation. But like I said, I do not, you know, this word adaptation just kills me. Because <laughs> adaptation is very Lamarckian when, when you talk of adaptation. So rather, we use the word getting used to the environment. Although that verb can be used interchangeably, getting used to can also mean adapted. But yes, it is a period where the organism is becoming used to acclimatizing or adapting to the environment. Okay. Any other questions? Um, we answered that. Um, Lacoste asked, what is pollination? I don't think there is something like that. Pollination, then she said pollination or population, so maybe he got it wrong. Pollination, no, we don't have that, my darling. That's Sorry, Lacoste. You have to just check what you're actually meaning from that, and you can follow up next week. There's no problem with that as well. Please, 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 please be free to do that as well. Good, any more you'll tell me, right, Megan? Yep, I'll just read them to you. Okay, now we come to question three. Question three asks simple definition type of a question. It says, explain what is meant by carrying capacity. And we've done that already. Carrying capacity of a habitat is the maximum. You must write this word maximum. In last year's exam, if you did not write the word maximum, they didn't give you the mark. Maximum number of individuals that the area can sustain or keep alive. For some reason, <laughs> our pen is giving us a problem. Today. There we go. Okay? So, 
Again, coming back to the liter, if the liter bottle can only take one liter, one liter is its carrying capacity. Now also, let's go back to something else. Let's go to your classroom. Your classroom has tables and chairs. There's probably 40 tables and chairs in some schools. In others, there may be only 20. In others, there may be 60. The number of tables and chairs determines the carrying capacity of your classroom. So if you have 40 pupils in your classroom, and there's 40 tables and chairs, that means you have reached the carrying capacity in that classroom. If one child even comes in now, there's a problem. Why? Because you've reached carrying capacity, there's no space for that one person. Somebody has to leave. Maybe it's you, or you, or you. So it's no good. However, if two or three leave, it's no big deal, because the class is still full. Remember our story about immigration and emigration and carrying capacity earlier? That's where I am. Now, if you had a class of 10, if you get another 10 children, no big deal because your carrying capacity is 40, in my example of 40. So you've got plenty of space. You can take more in that class. But if five decides to leave, five decide to leave, then you're in a problem because you've got five left in your class. And now that may not be a viable number. They're going to have to take your class and combine it with another class to make it a viable unit. So this is what you must understand about carrying capacity. Again, key in this section, understand the concepts. Don't swap them. Uh, the next one was easy, population. A group of organisms of the same species in the same habitat. A group of organisms of the same species in the same habitat at the same time that have the ability to interbreed. Remember, if they gave four marks, your four marks would have been same species, same habitat, same time, and ability to interbreed. Generally, they would give three marks. You will get it for those three. But please, do not leave this last part out. Although, I'm saying, if you say the same species, then obviously, from our definition of species, we have this ability to interbreed. Any questions, Megan? Yes, let me just go into it. It says... Oh, I wish I could say your name. I apologize. Um, let me just. While Megan is looking for that question, anybody sees the moon, put it on the post there. Let us know. But why does the species population increase when it gets used to the environment? Why does the species population, why does the population, population, you can't say species population, population is a group of the same species, right? So, popular, why does it increase when it gets used to? Ah, come, guys, that's obvious. It's used to the environment, so now it knows what to do. When you get into an environment, you're still, you're still shy. You don't, want to, you don't want to mix with the people. But the moment you start knowing, hey, now they know you in the house. Megan is here. Yeah, because now Azam and I are all good. Yeah. So the same way the animal is not used to the environment, it doesn't know what to do. The moment it knows what to do in that environment, it can reproduce. It finds its spot. Megan, over to you. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week. Aslan, thank you so much. Thank you. Matrix, thank you for a fantastic, fantastic show. Thank you, Macmillan, for proudly sponsoring it. Hi, Mom and Dad, and maybe Ryan, if you're watching. Thank you so much for all your posts, all your comments. We will see you next week, same time, same place. Don't forget to watch Connections now at quarter past seven. E having Eid, Eid Mubarak. And don't forget the moon. See you next time.